Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of TNT Footy. I'm one of the hosts, Taz, and to me, next to me is... <laughs> Eggy. How are we all, everyone? <laughs> Sorry about my voice. No, you sound beautiful, mate. <laughs> Good to hear. How are you going? I'm very well. Excellent. Excellent. Now, we're one down tonight, just so everyone knows. We uh, had someone uh, call in sick, not going to yep. say any names or anything. You <laughs> probably already know. <laughs> But we hope we hope you're starting to feel better soon, and, and yes. look, it happens. Happens a lot. It does. Tonight's show probably going to be a little bit shorter than normal, uh, maybe a minute because of Moisty's minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> however, um, we still do have a few things to go through, so we're obviously going to go through the the round results. Um, we'll go through viewer questions, and then we're going to go through some tipping. So we're probably going to do a bit more of a, a deep dive using Eggy's term into the the uh, the round results. Yep. Um, but Eggy's trying to save his voice a little bit just because he's, he's you know, he feels okay. But yeah, I, feel, I feel fine on myself. I just like the voice cuts out every now and then. So. <laughs> so apologies to viewers. You probably get sick of hearing my voice tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but look, um, before we get into it, Please, if you haven't already, we would love uh, love for you to like and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel, like this video, hit the bell so you know when we do go live. Uh, but also, if you haven't yet, check out our socials. You know, we've got Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, and we love interacting with you know with you guys on the daily. <laughs> Kelsey's put, "Hey lads, I'd be changing the logo, being one down." <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. We we were just going to put like a, a block over it. No, not really. <laughs> Welcome, Kelzo. Actually, speaking of Kelzo, should we go into the next part? Oh, could be a nice little segue into it. I th- Kelzo, you joined at the right time, mate. Do you want do you want to lead this one? No, you can lead this one, so I can switch <laughs> switch, switch it, and Kelzo be able to see his pretty mug on on screen. So we we got a, a photo sent through to us the other day from yours truly, Kelzo, who's in chat. And um, you'll see that pop up on the screen. He's received one of the shirts that he uh, he ordered last week. So when that pops up, you'll see his beautiful face. And just want to say they are on sale now. So if you are looking for a shirt, um, we've had a couple of people message me today. Let us know. Um, we'll put the link in the chat. Uh, but we, at the moment, we uh, we're not advertising except for basically live on the show or if someone messages us. So, or, or if, uh, you'll find in the description at the bottom of the um, uh, YouTube link as well in the YouTube, YouTube description. So, so we are starting there. to advertise. Thought of it's just <laughs> people can find it when they watch the show. They go, oh, that's a good idea. How can I find it? So just get down in the description and there it is. Love it. See, this is why Eggy's the, uh, the techno <laughs> man. Techno man, oh my goodness. <laughs> Turn back to clock, mate. <laughs> Start doing your woo girl. Oh, we have a new subscriber. Kelzo, hey. thanks for subscribing. Kelzo, number 40. Number 40. We are climbing the ranks, mate. We I'm are. Laughing. Thank you, Kelzo. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Thank you, All right, let's get into the results, Eggy. Let's get into the results. All right, let's switch this screen first before we get started. And now it's a Thursday night game. We had Melbourne take on Brisbane, and Brisbane were the underdogs, even though they made the grand final last year, and they showed us why they were in the grand final last year. Yep. They actually they put a clinic on against Melbourne, I thought. I agree with you 100%. Melbourne looked slow. They looked lethargic. Um, however, Lions pressure was absolutely elite, and I don't think anyone can say about Brisbane not being able to play at the G anymore. No. Well, I I feel like the grand final was was like a, it was a, it was a coin toss who was going to win that game, but obviously I'm, I'm happy with the outcome. But yeah, I, I think that, that 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 game proved that they they could they could play there. Absolutely, it did. Absolutely, and they actually looked like they were back to the Brisbane of last season. They were enjoying themselves. They were moving the ball well, but their their pressure was outstanding the whole game. Yep, the whole game. Did you get a chance to watch much of it? Yeah, I watched most of it Thursday night game. Uh, yeah, well, most of the night games I watched, um, I, I did. Like, I saw Char- Charlie Cameron was was pretty impressive. I thought. Yeah, he was great. Absolutely yep. great. He um, and I, I really liked Rainer's game. Yes, he was. He was pretty good on field. He was everywhere. 
Doc's just yeah. put g'day, boys. Welcome, Doc. G'day, Doc. How you going, buddy? Hopefully, uh, you're still recovering from your knee and improving every day. The um, Just back on this game, I, I think I said it last week, but Zorko's moved to half back since the injury to Coleman. Yep. Zorko's smashing it back there like he's not the he's not the tallest guy however he's so quick and he's an elite user of the footy yeah so i love seeing him back there um concern for melbourne though i think yeah it looks like a little bit of concern like like, like last week they, they, they were pretty good against, against the was it the bulldogs no was it when no, i was adelaide yeah yeah it was adelaide they yep. put their foot down and, and played well i think I did read somewhere they had three games in 13 days. That's pretty quick turnaround time for a game of AFL footy. Yeah. Uh, and it could explain part of the reason why they did look a bit lethargic and a little bit slow. However, a lot of the players, like the big name players, didn't have a great game. Like Petrarca was pretty quiet. Viney was still trying to do his beast mode thing, but even he wasn't even having an impact as much as normal. And Oliver, since he's hurt his hand, um, he's been way off the pace. Um, I did read that he's getting surgery though. So he yep. will, uh, I think they've got the bye next weekend. So it's probably a good time to do it. And there's, they're trying to say that he'll be back by Anzac Day weekend. Um, but geez, after having surgery on a frac- fractured finger, is that is that pushing it? I, was, I thought so, yeah. I know, I know when, when I fractured my finger, finger over Christmas, they, they said four weeks. Yeah. At least yeah, four that's weeks. Crazy. Yep. And you know how much it impacted you with just trying to do general things around yeah. the house. Yeah, yep. And uh, the dogs put getting stronger every day, bro. Thanks. And did you boys watch the VFL game today? What a classic game! Sorry, I didn't get the chance to watch the VFL game. I didn't either. However, Collingwood beat Carlton by a point, Eggy. Oh, Just, did they? Uh, they did. <laughs> they did. So terrible weekend for the Bagger supporters. Oh, absolutely fantastic by uh, by Collingwood. I heard the game was a cracker, Doc. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if there was many of the A grade players since they had the bye week this week. Playing oh, for him. You've just cut out a bit, mate. Oh, did I? How about now? I don't know if it's on my end. I can still hear audio a little bit. Okay. How about now? Anything good? Bad? Can't hear me? Oh, I think it might be my end. I've got major connection issues. If oh, I no. move around, it could... Oh, it could be riding I'm solo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to have to disconnect and reconnect, I think. Oh, no. Bit, bit technical difficulties. I'll see if I can move to the Bulldogs Essendon. And this, this was it. Yep. Oh, no, we're back. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. I can't see or hear you, so. Oh, no. <laughs> It's all right. I, actually, I can hear you. Oh, good to hear. Can you see me? Let's go. Sorry about this, guys. All right. I want Doc, Doc saw the put. It truly was a classic game, and I was just uh, touched on the Bulldogs Essendon. Unless you had something more about the Brisbane Melbourne game. Uh, no, nothing more on Brisbane Melbourne. No. But yeah, Essendon getting over the top of Bulldogs. I watched most of this game. I did. I, I did fall asleep halfway through the third quarter and woke up after the game and, and heard the Essendon song. So I, I knew they obviously won. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm surprised you fell asleep. It was a good game. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the Bombers' edge was back after losing it the week before. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say Jake Stringer is starting to really have that impact on games that we yeah. know he can, but consistently now. And merit, merit too. He's he's, he's always in and around that ball. Yeah, he's leading by example. He is actually, in my opinion, he's one of the best captains in the league at the moment. Um, there was a lot of talk about his uh, off-field and on-field sort of leadership skills and capabilities, yep. but I think he's he's put those to bed. He's putting his head in, he's getting in and under, he's bringing the team on his shoulders, and he's showing them exactly what they can do uh, with him leading from the front. No, that's good. I think I think it's fantastic. I've just read the comment from Doc. Taz has left the building. <laughs> and he's back now. It's all good. <laughs> Exit stage left. <laughs> the um, 
I, I did see that Bombers also put Sam Durham from uh, the Seymour country town. Yeah. Um, they put him to not not tag Bont, but run with Bont. And he actually kept him really quiet. That's good. That's really what you want. Quiet. That's when, when the, the number one player on the field. You keep keeping quiet. It's going to get you a few more wins, isn't it? Absolutely. No bull. Uh, sorry, no Bont, no Bulldogs. That the saying is that how it goes, eh? Better start using that hashtag. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did want to say about uh, Libba, though. Did you see him stumble to the ground? Yeah, well, well reports after he, I saw him, he said on the thing it was because of an ankle injury, but I don't know how true that was. It, it definitely didn't look like no. an ankle. If, you're, if you've got an ankle injury and you fall over, wouldn't you put your hands out to sort of yeah. stop you? Because the vision looked like you just fell head first. Um, I've read a lot of comments saying that it could potentially be delayed concussion symptoms or, or something because he got tackled pretty hard not long beforehand. Yeah. But you just don't know. Concussion is such an unknown thing. And that, was that the Jake Stringer tackle too? But then when you see the Jake Stringer tackle, you didn't really hit him across the head, but it might have, might have got him at, like it might have hit the ground on the head. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, Doc's put Bevo's job must be in doubt. It's, it's sure looking that way at the moment, but... Definitely, definitely. I mean, he dropped. So Jack McRae played a full game this week, but we've been talking about it on this show for the past few weeks. He's been subbed. He's been not in the side. He's one of your best players. You also have Caleb Daniel, one of the best distributors in the team. He got dropped for the week and he's playing VFL and Bevo's come out saying he doesn't know how many weeks he's going to be playing VFL for. So why would you drop those kinds of players when they really do add value? I, I don't understand. I don't understand him. Super coach players hate him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had him in my AFL fantasy team and had to get rid of him. Quick smart. Okay, <laughs> but I want to I want to ask you, Eggy, and, and guys in chat, does this win, does it say more about the Bulldogs or the Bombers? Uh, probably says more about the Bulldogs at the moment, but I'm waiting to see because I'm not sure who Ethan's got this week, but I know they've got Collingwood... An Anzac Day, and, and that's looking like it's going to be a rip, ripper game. So that'll be good to see. Yeah, it usually is. I, I think. It like, doesn't like, yeah, it doesn't matter matter where, where they are on the table and that, but like this year they seem to be yeah on, and like not, nothing could could have beat last year's one that I went to, and, and they they come back from a thirty point deficit and come come over the top in the last quarter. That like that, the crowd went crazy. I went crazy, and it was, <laughs> it was a good afternoon. But it's, it's, got, it's going, to, going to be a good game to see. So, so what are you saying? You're going to have a bad voice the the night out? But yeah, I think up. so. Yeah, because because <laughs> most most years I roll from that game over over to uh, Amy Park and watch the Storm play. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the greatest. Um, Doc's got here. Libs passed out. Yep, absolutely agree with it's that. It's also put. I reckon Bevo got lucky in 2016. I really, I don't really rate him. That's I, fair. Yeah, I, I think 26. He had a young team and they just they rang legs off the team. And I, I think that was a turning point where. Teams like, like the I think the 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 um the comp is when teams started to to run a lot more when they started to really knuckle down and go for it. I think he, he yeah. sort of sort of changed the way they played the AFL really. Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone thought he was going to be the Clarko of Bulldogs. Yeah, uh, where Clarko won a flag really early on when he took over with a really young team, and then it took a few years for him to start winning again. I think their window's closing yeah. right now. I think it's closing, and I think it's closing rapidly um, because they're such an inconsistent team. Like, they actually played really well against Geelong last week. We were, we were talking about Yeah, it. yep. And then they come out and, I mean, not, not trying to take anything away from Essendon, but they just did not play anywhere near to the capabilities that they should be able to. So, yeah, I was I was rather disappointed with, um, with, with uh, the Bulldogs. Yep. in that game. But uh, next game, next game was actually really surprising. It was really surprising. It was very, did... very close to GWS. And I think, well, GWS had, had a few injuries. So I think that's what sort of kept St. Kilda in it and, and their, their bad kick in as well. So, Well, at GWS were up by 36 points in the last quarter at yep. some stage early in the last quarter. And St. Kilda just came home just flying, absolutely flying. Um, I just couldn't believe it that Giants only won by a point in yep. the end because GWS were all over them all day until that last quarter. Now, whether they put the queue in the rack, 
uh, whether it was because of some of the injuries, because there was quite a number of injuries. Well, so, to... yeah, I think Taylor went out early. And then, yeah, concussion. Yep. yep. And then Coniglio went out. I'm not sure when he went out, but yeah, obviously that, that would have already been a man down. They would, would have made the sub already and there would have been a man down in the, on the rotations. Yeah, absolutely. And then you had, yeah, so Canelio did his knee. Yep. Um, they're waiting to hear back what that is. Um, Kieran Briggs and Josh Kelly were also getting worked on during the game uh, for separate in- incidents. So Kelly had uh, sore ribs and Briggs had a shoulder injury. So they weren't at 100%, you know, fitness either. And they would have been off the ground for extended periods. And then you've got Tom Green not really stepping up and playing as as dominant as he was early in the yeah. season either. I was supposed to put the captain on, on him, but that ended up um, accidentally putting on uh, someone, Thomas, I think it was. And he ended up scoring. Yeah, I can't remember. It, it, was, it was a debutant, I think. It might have been a debutant who's only had one or two games. I uh, ended up uh, putting the captain on him by accident, but he's, he scored a few more points. They so worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's lucky. Yeah, it was lucky. I was, really I, was, I was supposed to put on someone that wasn't playing because I got Max Gorn, but yeah. Oh, so you missed Gorn's score. Yeah, oh, no, I, yeah I, I had him as vice, but I forgot I forgot to, to change it that, that morning. That oh, morning. brutal. Yeah. That is brutal. You could have put Grundy as captain if yeah, you got him. I, I, I don't have him as captain. but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Taylor being out for a couple of weeks is going to be a big loss. He, he's okay. He, they put a, a post up of him in a hospital bed. Um, you know, given the thumbs up, which is good. I mean, he's being obviously monitored because it was it's a pretty sickening incident. I don't know yeah. if you saw it or not. No, I didn't see it. I saw, I saw caught bits bits and pieces of it. Like this, most games this weekend, I didn't get to catch a, a lot of it. Like a lot of it, the games I was watching on my phone. Yeah, Just, yeah, out and about with the family and stuff and work and that. That's dedication, though. Watching it on your phone. Yeah, the doc said uh, he's out for two weeks because of the knee. But that'll be the cog. Cornelio, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and King for St Kilda, it looks like he's done an E2. He's waiting for scan results. Oh, I haven't seen oh, anywhere yeah. he's, on the news he's, today. He's in my supercoach team too. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, I know. That, 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 that hurt and McKercher and Yeah, well, we'll touch on him soon yeah. as well. So Actually, do, you, do, you, do you want to bring up the next game? or? Yeah, absolutely. Or do you, or do you, want, do you want me to skip it? <laughs> no, no, I'm, no, I'm okay to talk about okay. this. Carl, um, Carlton v Adelaide. Adelaide wins by two points. Carlton were... Ro- no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I was going to say robbed. <laughs> we weren't, we weren't. Adelaide played very, very good football, yeah. and they kicked extremely accurate, 16 well, goals for. Because they did so bad last week, because I, I tipped them last week, and I watched that that close that game pretty close, and I was like, they're, they're terrible, they're never going to win a game. And then, yeah, obviously, they're taking, taking the week out and worked on it. Yeah, and they made a few changes to their midfield rotation. So... Um, Isaac Rankin, for example, he was averaging about five centre bounces, you know, throughout the game for the first few rounds. He attended 20 yesterday and he's got that X factor. He gives them that spark, the skill, the speed to break through the middle. Um, They also had a guy in there called, I think it's Saligulio. I can never say his name. Um, he played fantastic as well. And him and Rankin actually added to that midfield mix tremendously. And they just tore Carlton apart. Um, their overlapping run, their skills by hand and their accuracy around not just the field, but as I said before, in front of goal, it was, it was great to watch, honestly. Good to see Tex Walker back to yep. his best. Um, and Keys always smashes Carlton. He's kicked more goals against Carlton than he has any other side. Any other side in the AFL. So, but no, it's good. I think that was the win that the Crows needed to have. And is this going to be the turning point for them? They're one in four now. Does this mean that they're going to start getting a bit of a roll on and and make the finals, which a lot of people predicted that they should? Well, hope, hopefully, but yeah, we'll see how they go. It's, yeah, de- definitely going to be interesting. Um, Carlton did have a chance to seal the game late in the fourth quarter. Um, Matty Owies, what the hell? <laughs> Running into the goals from the angles, going to banana it underneath the defender's smother, and he kicks the freaking ground. <laughs> Does not score. Adelaide go down the other end, kick a goal. It was probably the low light of the match, um, and it just goes to show where Carlton was at because they kicked 14-14. So... Yeah. 
I'll touch more on uh, a couple more statistics. But I, I, I think Todd, Todd was agree. Maybe it was a was it was a bit of, bit of karma for their for the end of the game last week. Maybe. Maybe, oh, maybe absolutely. The, the tables had turned this time, and I thought, no, nah, let's give it, to, give it to the other team. <laughs> Definitely. And do you know what? The video review, Matty, are we, did you watch this one? This no, game? I, have, no. I, I was on my phone. I watched like the last, last five minutes. Matty always earlier in the game, might have been third quarter, um, near the end of the third quarter, kicked a goal. Yeah, and it was a goal. Video reviewed it. Umpire call touched. Video reviewed it, and they said it was inconclusive. Even the commentators and everyone were saying you can clearly see that it's missed the player by... Uh, like a decent margin. You can see it on the, the video. They weren't sure why it wasn't called a goal and reversed. Um, but yeah, it, I'm a strong believer in cup. Yep. So hopefully now we can even it out and we can come out and fire. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to the game next week. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and try and get the uh, free kick Carlton chant going again, are we? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was 21 free kicks each to Carlton and Adelaide. Yeah, so it was fair this week, wasn't it? <laughs> pretty fair, pretty fair. Um, just one last thing on the Carlton game, then we'll move on. I, I just want to say how good it was to see Sam Walsh back in the game. Um, I think he got 34 touches and 12 tackles or dominated. That's good um, for a first game back. Oh, I was blown away. And he absolutely helped my fantasy team. <laughs> really pleased with that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go to the next game? Uh, Port Adelaide Fremantle. I actually fell asleep near the end of this one as well. You were <laughs> falling asleep. I know. I've been falling asleep on the couch all, all week. Just, just been big week work. Early Wait, starts. Which, which game are you talking about? Uh, Port Port Adelaide versus Fremantle. Now you've missed one. I, I missed all oh, Gold Coast Hawthorne. They're on. They're on. <laughs> they're on at the same time. So, so my, oh, my, 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 my 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 organization is probably a bit different. No, no, that's all right. Let's go, go Port Frio because that was a snooze fest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I ended up falling asleep on that one. I, I thought I, I thought I tipped Fremantle. And I, I said on my, on my tips that I, I'm changing from Port Adelaide to Fremantle, but I must have forgot to put the tip on to Port Adelaide <laughs> <laughs> uh, to change change the tip. So I ended up getting it right. So, I was what did, so what did the video say? Well, video says I, I picked Fremantle. Oh, but, so you've done a mistake that yeah, I did. I did the mistake that worked out worked out in my favour. <laughs> so I've, I've gone. I've gone from 55th place in the placing in the, the tip into 49th. So, geez, that's a good mistake. I'm climbing, climbing my way up. <laughs> that's a great mistake to make. What a yeah. We'll talk on tipping soon, but geez, it's been tough this week. Yeah. Um, the Frio's game plan at the moment it actually makes me want to not watch them. Yeah, it's slow. Like I didn't see it. Like, look, I, you you saw me last week with the game. I only caught, caught the last quarter. I didn't yep. get. I didn't get to see how how bad the snooze fest was last week against Carlton, but it was bad. You're saying that they're a lot like St Kilda. They're just it's hard to score against them. They're the old St Kilda, yeah. yeah. So well, well te- technically, Ross Lyon did come from Frio first. Well, no, he didn't. Well, he, he <laughs> wasn't St Kilda. Then he went to Frio. <laughs> then he came back again. <laughs> so, yeah, it's Frio's game style. I mean, look, their team defense is outstanding. It's a really solid structure. Really hard to penetrate. But their offense is not up to the same standards. They they actually can't kick a winning score. Once they can get the two to, to even up, you know, the defense being outstanding and the, the attack being outstanding, they should actually start putting teams away. Yeah. However, they're just not there. They've got a great forward line in Tracy and Amis, um, and they've got Tabiner back playing now. So their forward line has some good names in it but they just can't move the ball to kick a winning score, which is really disappointing. Because their midfield's great too. They do. They do have a good midfield. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I like, I like that Jager Amir. I think he's in my team, but he's a bit hot and cold. And it, it was starting off the bench a couple of times, been the sub a couple of times this, this year. So, Yeah, the old Taylor Lautner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dupe version of him, the ugly version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's... They, they, you come across from Hawthorne and hasn't really been in a consistent part of their team. And then another one who I'm really surprised because he had a fantastic year either last year or the year before was Will Brody. He come across from Gold Coast for more opportunities. He hasn't been cited, so there's talk that he might look for another move um, to a team that needs a, a dominant midfielder as well. Yeah, because he can play. He can play that inside ball. He's a tall midfielder, similar to like Paddy Cripps and Will Setterfield. You know those sort of taller players that are bulls. So maybe we'll see if he's he's on the move. Yeah, Doc Stuck says he put 
Fremantle's game plan reminds me of when Ross Lyon was in charge. It was like 100%. Yep. Absolutely, Doc. 100% agree with you, mate. 100%. The problem is it, it makes you really um, not care if you miss watching them play. Yeah. And AFL obviously want ratings and viewers and people to go to games, but why would you against Fremantle? It's just going to be shit. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, we, we had Gold Coast Hawthorne. Now, this game was on at the same time. What, what I don't like about KO, you, you can split screen on your phone, I think. I mean, you, can, you can split screen on the, TV, on, the, on, the, on the computer, but you can't split screen on the TV. So. Can you split screen on the, on the computer? Yeah, yeah, I always have it up. I always have two games up with the NRL and the, and the AFL up. Does can that count you, as one screen or two? Just one, yeah. Because I've actually had four up, so I've, I've had like... I've had like the racing in one corner, the NRL, and the two two AFL games on. I am going to have to try that out next time. I didn't know you could do it, so I was flicking between the two. <laughs> oh, except we watched a really crap movie as well. But anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good to see Suns uh, dominate. Yeah, They're starting to really stamp their authority and and show that they mean business and putting the lower ed, you know, um, the lower teams away like they should be. I think Hardwick's been really good for them. I know it's still only early, but their game style now has changed dramatically. And the midfield of, you know, Anderson, Rao, Miller, Wits, and Flanders running through there, yeah. it looks elite. Well, that's you say those names and everyone knows those, knows those names. Absolutely. And then you've got King up front and yep. this new uh, Jed Walter. He looks like he's a beast. He reminds me, again, I'm being calm and biased, but he reminds me of a really young, a bit more solid version of Charlie Kerno. Oh, so and so, what, what did you take away from the Hawthorne? Because I kind I kind of feel for Hawthorne because they they played Sunday, so they more than likely would have, would have flown back to Melbourne Monday, maybe had a training session or something on the Tuesday, then had to fly up fly up to the Gold Coast a few days after, and have a training session up there, and then get ready for the game. So I reckon there was, was a bit of travel in it for them. That do they look tired or? Um, you could probably say the same about Melbourne the week before. They had yeah. a bit of travel. Going uh, like every team ended up going to Adelaide last week and then flying back and either having to go away again. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I thought because because theirs was the very last game and then it sort of had had the six day six day backups that are sort of sort of rolled into each other. Potentially, um, I just think they've gone backwards. Yeah, I really do. Like every game that I've watched of theirs this year, they really just don't seem on. I thought we, we we missed the end of the game last week when they played Collingwood. So is it saying more more about Collingwood that maybe they're not up up to par this year? If they're if they're just 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 winning games against Hawthorne and then Hawthorne go up to the Gold Coast and get get blitz. I still think Pies are going to be okay. Yeah, it's it's still early. Um, I know I keep saying that every week, and I probably will up until it's like round ten, because that's when you can sort of go right. We're almost halfway through the season. Where are we at? And you yep. start to get a bit more of an idea of the top eight. I still think Collingwood can make it. Um, Hawthorne, this could be the year that they need to go backwards to then go forwards, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean, yep. Um, and they might, or well, hopefully they will learn a lot because they've got some good players. I know they've got some injuries as well, but they've got some good players. They brought in a, few, uh, a fair few in the off-season, so they're probably still trying to gel and understand how each of them play as well. Yeah. Um, but I I don't see them any higher than a bottom fourteen. No, nah, no, nah, neither. And it, I mean, the question then is going to be how long's Mitchell been in charge for, and are they going to back him to see this rebuild fully? Yeah. Or will the pressure start coming? Yeah, it's, it's going to come sooner or later, isn't it? Absolutely, because I think this is his what third or fourth year now. Oh, is it? I suppose it was like yeah, third. I think in third. I think it's his third. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if it doesn't start coming towards the end of this year, if they're still performing like they are now, is next year going to be the last year? Who knows? That's right. But anyway, we'll move on. Then we are moved on to the slaughtering of Geelong versus North Melbourne. Yeah, not much in this one. No. <laughs> not much in this one at all. I thought a, a, a lot of people, because because North Melbourne's like young midfielder, are looking good, and yeah, they, they're gonna, they're going to they're going to gel soon. But Geelong are just they are um they come out firing and they're they're, they're ready to I think they're they're ready to go again. Yeah, I, I agree with you. They've had the the year off as they yeah, say. Yep. Um, the gap year. 
But they look like they're enjoying. Like I said it before about Brisbane, but they look like they're enjoying their footy again. Yeah. And they look like, I mean, they're, they're bigger bodies compared to North Melbourne. Like you put the two teams in comparison, North Melbourne have got much bigger bodies and they're a lot more hardened and matured in their game style compared to North Melbourne. North will get there, but Geelong just showed their class and maturity today. Doc, Doc's put my take on the Gold Coast game was Guinea got, got booed. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel sorry for him. It was, it was, it was struggling, it was struggling to, to get to get a game. It was a sub most weeks with Collingwood, and then he got offered to, to, to go to go play for his childhood team. Like it, I, you tell me if, if if you would take the chance or not. I I, I don't blame him for leaving. I think no. I just don't like the behaviours that he had towards the end of the career at Collingwood. Um, and a lot, and I know he's still young. He's like he's only yeah. like twenty one or something, coming up twenty one years of age. Um, I did see a video which I thought was a bit harsh on. Mac Andrew, and that was Mac Andrew was just getting up off the ground. Guinea pushed him over, but they didn't show that part of the video. They only showed the part where Mac Andrew retaliated and pushed Guinea over from behind. Uh, and they were like, "Oh, Guinea should have got a free kick." And I was like, "Well, no, he should. He <laughs> instigated it." Anyway, um, but yeah, sorry. So back to the the cats and Bruce game. McCurch has subbed very early after a, a rib injury from a, a bump from Cameron. Nothing in it. And, yep. and it didn't look too bad. Again, I just think it's the bigger body hitting a, a small frame. But Cameron. Looked on. He, the last two weeks, maybe three weeks now, he's looked fantastic. He kicked six today from 21 disposals. Um, and when he's firing, Geelong are firing. Yeah, another younger player who's going to have a, a very interesting contract negotiation process coming up. I think it's this year, or it might be next year. Is Max Holmes? He kicked two goals from I think it was twenty one, twenty two disposals, maybe more uh, today as well. And um, I've been hearing rumours that he might be a million dollar player. Oh wow, he's playing that well, and he's only again he's only twenty one or twenty two. So great, great signs there for Geelong for the year. They're the only other undefeated team along with the Orange Tsunami. Yep. Well, yeah. But uh, outstanding performance too by uh, Harry Shizzle Dacos. <laughs> I won't say that. <laughs> but he, 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 in his second year, he's, he's dominating. Like, he's getting 38, 38 disposals, goal. He's, yeah. yeah. But for the he, little young fella, he's, 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 he's giving me Nick Dacos like, like... Vibes? Yep. Yeah. Well, he won the best and fairest in his first year. Yep. Like, I mean... <laughs> It does say a lot about him. Yeah. But it also says a lot about North Melbourne. Yeah. At the same time. But I, I still think that in the next two to three years, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing their midfield go head to head against Port Adelaide's midfield in two to three years. Yeah. I think that's going to be some epic games. Epic. But yeah. So I, yeah, not much more to really say about that. Cats just dominated. Yeah. And then the Savo. Yep. My 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 uh, tip tip of the round was uh, West Coast would win over Richmond. It was, and I was like, "You're joking, aren't you?" No, no, I wasn't. Like they they <laughs> look they looked pretty good last week. Like they had they had glimpses of glimpses of good, and I thought the, the look at the Richmond team that that went over and how ha- ha- how many like the injuries and that I thought like they're gonna fire. And the way um, last week that uh, Harley Harley Reid when he kicked that goal and he was like. Showing his colours and that, I was like, the the crowd's going to get around him this week, and he's going to, going to, yeah, go eight. Absolutely. Going back to your question before about Hawthorne, do yes. you think the same about Richmond? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think they're in a bit of bit of strife, but it's their first year for their coach, isn't it, Uze? Or... Oh, sorry, not that part about the travel because they travelled to Adelaide last week. Yeah, come, come back and then, and then yeah, that's, that's 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 probably why I lean towards them as well. Yeah, but, yeah. But I, I feel like they, they would have had a few more days off. I can't remember when they played last week. Whatever. Um, I can't remember either. But yep. they again, they didn't look. I mean, they started well. They they were up by twenty five or so points, um, about halfway through the third uh, first quarter, and then it was just all Eagles from there on out. But yeah, they 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 played on the Sunday as well. So yeah, but at yep. least yeah, they got the seven days sort of sort of turnaround. It wasn't as... yeah, they got that extra sleep. Yep. 
Um, I saw a video today because I didn't watch all of the Eagles games. I couldn't. However, I did see a video of Harley Reid doing the don't argue to Dustin Martin. Oh, really? Yeah. Did it work? Did it work? Yep. Oh, yep it, it wasn't huge. It was just a push off and a turn. Yeah. Um, but you'll see that. That's going around all the socials. Oh. I'll see if I can share yeah. it to our um our story. Yeah, we're later have on. To. It was it was sensational. But I agree with you. West Coast did have some good signs last week. And I think that's gonna and the win today, I think that's gonna give them some really much needed confidence. Well, we've got we've got the Battle of the West coming up this weekend, so I reckon that's gonna be one hell of a game. But Frio versus West Coast, so it, it should be like a, just... a, a, te- a team that that wants that wants to go for it and a team that wants to slow you down. So I think I don't know who's gonna who's gonna win, but it's it's gonna be a good 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 game to watch. I reckon. I think it will be. I think I think Frio still win. I think their midfield. I think, yeah, I think better. so too. But um, but no, I, 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 I think I think West Coast. I think they got got a bit of belief in them now. Yeah, absolutely. And Harley Reid is playing with authority. Again, for a first-year player, these first-year players coming through now, yep. they're playing like they've been in the system for three or four years, some of them. It's, it's think, yeah, their confidence is through the roof. And I think, was it was it Waterman or something? Last I checked, he kicked six goals. I don't know what he, what he, what he ended, ended up on. I nearly put him in my multi for one. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, they might not score that many goals, so I won't put him in. That was, yeah, just crazy. Um, but Eagles were actually dominant at the stoppages. So Tigers really missed Tim Taranto yep. because Eagles won the clearance count by 23. That's massive. Elliot Yo had 15 clearances alone, and he's, you know, he's turning it back the clock as well after being injured all last year. So if they can get these players to start really performing, Jeremy McGovern's having an outstanding year yes, down Yes, he back. was. He was. Harley Reid's getting more confident as each week comes on. If Elliot Yo can stay injury free and Tim Kelly can, you know, keep producing what he can produce, maybe they can win a few more games. Maybe they they'll still probably finish bottom four, but I don't think they'll spoon after seeing what I've seen the last two weeks. Nah. Well, yeah, I think yeah, it's going to be between Hawthorne and North Melbourne, but and and even Richmond. Yeah, that's true. Like, um, uh, I know may, maybe maybe uh, Todd wasn't that far off the money. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We were sort of laughing at him, but yeah, laughing. He's got Colin Richmond at the bottom and uh, Sydney at the top, but yeah. he's made some good calls, but he's also made some early crows as yeah, well. Yeah, oh, he loves a good early crow. <laughs> but, it, but we can't we, we can't kick a man down while he's not here. So no, he'll be back next week, giving it back to us. <laughs> he always does. <laughs> well, that that was a, a good a, a good dive into the round. Yeah, I think. So do, do we have time to touch on the table, you reckon? On the what, sorry? The, uh, the ladder. Oh, the ladder. What do you call it? The, the table. table. Sorry. The on, on, table. On, on Google, on the Google, the, the, it's up on the table. You'll see. see I think it... we do, yeah. We're, we're, we're doing quite well for time. Yeah. You know, I'm, I try to be the timekeeper. It doesn't always work. <laughs> well, G- GWS and Geelong are out, out on top with, with five, five wins from five games. But I think, yeah, they've got their toughest tests ahead this weekend. I think Geelong's got Brisbane and GWS have got taken on Carlton. And they're, they're going to come in with a couple of injuries by the look of it. Yeah, both teams will actually. Yep. And Carl- Carl- Carlton Carl- lost some, had some injuries too. Did they? But yeah, Carl- Carlton play, playing on a semi home field in, in front of a, in front of a uh, home crowd should be a good game. I hope, I hope you're going to cheer Carlton on, Eggy. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see where the drinks go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there, actually, wearing yeah, our team t-shirts. You know what happened last time? I, 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 tipped, I tipped the Bulldogs. I was going for the Bulldogs, but somehow I was cheering for Geelong at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Getting your woo girl out. Yeah. Probably the cause, well, the cause of the voice, I think. But I feel yeah, like the, the show last week, my voice was fine, so it's sort of come, come bad through the week, so... Yeah, definitely. Calzo's got here loving the Giants on top. <laughs> I'm loving you getting into footy, Calzo. Yeah, it's good. It's bloody awesome. Bloody awesome. Uh, after the undefeated teams on top, we've then got uh, quite a few teams, four teams on 16 points. Yes. Um, so we've got Port Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne, and Carlton with Melbourne playing six games. And I'm pretty sure they've got the bye next week, which will even that up a little bit more. So interesting round coming up. Carlton and GWS, that, that I think you're right. I think it's going to be a cracking game yep. to see what happens there. No Sam Taylor is a big, big loss for GWS. Um, but no Adam Sard and no Mitch McGovern for Carlton is probably just as big, especially if Cornelio's out for Giants as well. Yep. From there down, we've got Fremantle, 
Gold Coast Suns and Essendon have moved up into ninth. Awesome to see the Suns in the top eight. Yes. Absolutely awesome. Um, do you want to go through the, the last part? So then we got uh, Brisbane, Bulldogs, St Kilda and Collingwood all on eight points down to 13th. And then we got Richmond and Adelaide 14th, 15th and Hawthorne and North Melbourne are on the bottom with no wins yet. But so it's, it's still very open that, that, that bottom, the bottom pro pro from, from six down. Absolutely. And the, you know, a few teams have got a couple, a bit of a tough run coming up. Yep. Um, I know Geelong's got a tough run. Carlton's definitely got a tough run coming up. We're going to learn a lot. Essendon have a tough run as well. So we're going to learn a lot about a lot of teams over the next sort of three to four weeks and where they're at. And that kind of puts us through to that eight to round eight to round 10 mark, which is when you can start to see a bit of a, a divide on the ladder and see who's going to be in the top eight. Kelso put, I won't be cheering on Carlton. And uh, Michael Craig's put, Cats footy have a difficult six week ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I suppose wasn't it last year that around this time we saw, uh, I think it was St Kilda and Essendon were on top undefeated. Yeah, they, yeah, that's right. And they were we, right up there. And then, then in the end, I think uh, St Kilda made the eight, but Essendon didn't. So, and, and this is the thing, right? I'm in a lot of Carlton Facebook groups, um, and so many supporters are saying we shouldn't have lost, and we shouldn't have done this, and you know we're not as good as what we should be, you know. They're so negative about things, not actually understanding. It's a long season. Yeah. Why would you want to play your best footy right now when you've still got another, what are we at, round five? You've still got another 18 rounds to go. Yeah, because if you, 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 you come out firing now, teams are going to watch how you play, learn how you play, and yeah, figure, out how, to, figure, figure out how to beat you. So That's what, right. Because so, the, the footy you're playing in round one is not going to be the same footy you're playing in round 24. That's exactly right. And we, do you know what? A good example of that was Collingwood last year. Yeah. They played awesome footy for most of the year, started to sort of dip a little bit before finals. Remember, they lost yep. a few games, and it's probably because they'd secured a top four spot. Yeah. And then come into finals, and they started playing that brand again. Yeah. So it's a long – Carlton lost six or seven in a row, and they were in the bottom four. They finished fifth. It, it's a long season, and I just wish a lot of football fans actually – could see that. Yeah. I know emotion comes into it, but you've also got to try and think a bit logical as well. Yeah, 100%. Um, now, no moisties minute, as we mentioned before. Um, oh, Doc's heading off. Have a good night, boys. Take care. See you, Doc. Thank see you, you for tuning in, mate. Thanks for dropping by. Good to see you week in and week out. Absolutely. And I'll see you at pool this week too, Doctor. Um. No deep dive tonight because Eggies sounds like a... <laughs> I don't even know what I sound like. <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> Kettle. <laughs> a recorder. <laughs> Remember the old recorders that you had? Yeah, yeah. Or, or a dog's chew toy, a bit squeaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to move straight into viewers' questions. Um, now, we've chosen three this week. Had a, a fair few come through about Carlton, as we oh. always do. Well, um, I, I think I, I think our in, Instagram followers are a bit bit biased. I notice that there's a lot of Carlton that come up on the feed. I'm trying to change <laughs> it. I really am. I'm trying to change the algorithm now. It's, um, but please feel free to jump in. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll try. <laughs> um, so because I comment on lots of different posts, AFL posts, and everything, but um, yeah. Anyway, so. Jeez, I think we've got the heater on. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Um, viewer question. So, Carlton underscore flag is 2024 is the Instagram handle. If you're a Carlton supporter, please jump on and follow uh, the Instagram. Such a great guy. Yeah. Um, and he, and he, hope... he, he did his dirty the other week. <laughs> he did. And that was great. That was so good. Great content. It was, it was content. A great content. And we hope um, he messaged me before saying he couldn't tune into the show, but he will watch the replay. Um, so I just yeah, want to say hopefully he had a great trip in Broome as well. All right. Question is, how exactly with specifics, so talking about stats, did Carlton lose that game other than inaccuracy? See, I didn't get to see much of the game, but from my from what I could see, it mainly was because of the inaccuracy. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it was. Um, I had a look. I had a look at every stat when I, when this question came through to try and really break down. The only stat that I could really see that was different 
um, or Crows had significantly more of was one percenters across the ground. They had 38. Carlton had 29. Um, every other stat, every other category was very even. Even, I mean, even the free kick counts were 21 each. So Carlton had 28 scoring shots and Crows had 20. Now that's only what scored. Carlton also had a couple of uh, missed like out on the fulls yep. uh, or didn't make the distance or probably more than a couple, probably three to four, and Crows only had one or two. So if Carlton had have kicked straight, they definitely would have actually won. Five of Carlton's behinds were rushed as well. Yep. So um, I really did try and break it down, Carlton Flaggers. Could not find too much. Anything to add? Uh, Harry McQuay, McKay's uh, accuracy was that was that good? Because it's been good this year. So yep. was was it pretty decent that game as well? There's more other little bits yeah. and pieces. Yep. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. He, he still kicked a couple of goals, two or yep. three goals. Charlie Kerno kicked a few goals, um, but Charlie Kerno's missed a few as well. So he could have ended up with a heap more goals. And it was things like like I mentioned before, oh, he's kicking the ground. Yep. Just just really disappointing. But do you know what? Adelaide's pressure was great. Adelaide's pressure was fantastic. They come away with the win. Um, well, they, 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 they needed it because they, they were 0-4. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And hopefully this means Rankin will stay in the middle as well because he's such a great player going through the middle. Yeah. Um, hopefully that answers your question, uh, Carlton Flaggers. Hopefully. Now, question number two, Carlton.butt.starwars. So another Instagram handle. Feel free I, to follow them. I did I did, did have a look at that the other day because I was like, well, who's this? And I was like, oh, so he's made like little Carlton face, like player faces with little um Star Wars pictures. So it's quite, it is quite, looks quite cool. You should check it out. It, it is cool. And it's a point of difference. Like yeah. you see all like, yeah, I don't know. I, I really enjoy the page. And another one that I just saw, liked the photos, commented on a couple and started messaging. So um, question from Carlton Star Wars, I'm going to start calling him that, is did Carlton improve in areas like clearances and stoppages in yesterday's game due to the addition of Sam Walsh and Mark Pitane? Can I answer this one? Yep. I think it definitely improved because of Walsh. Pito did have a couple of um, clearances as well, but I think it's really tough to play Pito, De Koning, Mackay and Kerno all in the same game. Um, I really, really like Mackay being second ruck, and I think bringing Pito in for Chera was a mistake. That's just my thoughts, but it was fantastic to have Walsh there at his at his best. Well, not his best, but just coming in and dominating straight up. So, bit of a on the fence answer to your question, Star Wars, but um, hopefully it's it's answered. Oh, um, I'm I'm going to ask you this one, Eggy. Okay, this is from Turtle Burger One Forty Four. Is that is, is is that our turtle or is that a different that, turtle? That is that is our turtle. I like how we've adopted him. <laughs> <laughs> and I th- he said he was going to watch the uh, the replay of this as well. So he's out for dinner tonight. So he's not with us in chat. Um, but he's he's got here. When will GWS lose their first game? Ne- will it be next week? Now that they have lost Cogs and Taylor. Yeah, I, I was already leaning into it with with Carlton coming off the loss. I think being being at home, they're gonna they're gonna have a point to prove, and yeah, and I think those those uh, injuries are just gonna add 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 to it. I think I still think it'll be a close game, but I I think that uh, Carlton will get over the top. Yeah, I I think so. I think Carlton will come out quite vicious in in the the game style that yep. they want to play. Um, if GWS do win next week, I'm just having a look at the next few rounds. I don't actually see them losing if they win next week until round 11 when they play Geelong. Oh, wow. In Geelong. So can, 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 they, you, can you roll off a few of those teams off? Of course, yeah. So they've got Carlton next week. Then they come, or oh, I nearly said who Carlton was playing the week after. Um, then they come up against Brisbane at home. So yep. I, I don't see them losing at home. And Brisbane, even though they look to be playing better, they still haven't sold me yet. Yep. After that, they've got Sydney in Sydney. So that's usually a cracking game. But again, yeah. Sydney's not playing at their best. Um, and it's probably a, a 60-40 percent of though. Yep. Uh, round nine, they're coming up against Essendon at Marvel Stadium. 
round 10, they're up against the Bulldogs in Sydney, and then they come up against Geelong at GMHBA Stadium in Geelong. Yep. So that that's probably the game where I make, I, I think Geelong will be favourites to win, but I think GWS will go in favourites against every other team. Yeah. What What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 all, I think that the first two games against Brisbane and um, Sydney are going to be going to be hard ones. But yeah, yeah, like Essen, that I think. That would... would you say that they're fifty fifty games, or would you say GWS will go in favourites? I think fifty fifty. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. Sydney might even be slight favourites in Sydney, but but I think I think it'll be more fifty fifty for the them being at home against. Yep. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. Oh, Sydney didn't play this weekend, did they? They had the buy. Yeah. Yeah, them and Magpies. Yep. Yeah. Um, who's got the buy next week? I think it's Melbourne. Just Melbourne. Uh, is it Melbourne just, I think it's uh, Melbourne and Richmond. Yeah. Yeah. So the, good this, time this, to have this, it. This round zero, it's, it's really disrupted my um super coach. <laughs> Mate, it's absolutely, absolutely. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Best 18 players on the field, and then you go, oh, shit, okay, that's right, and then you yeah. try it anyway. And, and it's like, oh, I've got six players between Sydney and Dick Collingwood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have 18 players. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right. Tipping. Tipping. Let's change the screen quickly. All right. We've got G Ross still out on top. She's oh, out on 36. She, she scored four this week. I think a lot of people got four this week. So, and all, that brings me to my next one. Perfect round tipping's up to $30. Thank, thanks, thanks for Taz for not taking it next week. And then we've got the, these two weeks to add it on. So we're up to thirty dollars next week. So hopefully get your tips in. Go cats uh, end up picking the um the West Coast, so he jumped up a few and he's he's in uh in four spot with thirty four points. Wonder Pro- if that's uh ping. Oh it could be. Go cats twenty one. There's a few on thirty four, down to Oscar Kills. I, I do I, I do I do notice there are a lot of a lot of people joining in joining in the tipping this year through, throughout the weeks. So so we're gonna do quite a few, so I'm not sure where they're getting the links from. Maybe that maybe they I don't know if they're watching the show or or they they've been from Randy forums and that but yeah make sure you come say hello and and you can't you can't get the perfect round tipping money unless you just come say hi but so exactly I, I, either do it do it in chat or message out so when, when you know you've won that's it's right I, yeah because otherwise they would have had winners last week but no one messaged through that's right and we've budgeted <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've budgeted. <laughs> Oh goodness! That, 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 that's right. I don't mind because it's, it's just building up the kitty for one of our loyal loyal watches. So that's right. Decide. Hopefully, someone can get it. Yeah, hopefully. Otherwise, it'll, it'll just be be, be a good. Uh, might do a special one for, for finals or something. Or we might might even put the money towards a, a shirt for someone or something. Oh, or a few people to get See a few shirts go. out of it. Yeah. See how we go. That's gonna do us, Eggy. That is gonna do us. What a show! We got what through show? it without Moisty. We did. I, I, I do, I do, I do want to add since since we haven't quite reached the hour mark yet, but um, I've, I've got worrying signs for Collingwood coming off the bye this week and playing Port Adelaide, and then then a five day backup playing Essendon. So, bit bit nervous in the next couple of weeks. We'll see. Magpies versus Magpies next week. <laughs> magpies versus Magpies next. Week. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, yeah, I suppose. Um. <laughs> But I, I, like Carlton has shown that, that you can win after the bye, and uh, Geelong and and Melbourne have shown that you can win after the five day break. So I'm hopefully that it keeps going. I think there's some good games coming up next yep. week. You've got St Kilda Dogs. I'm just going to run through real quickly, actually. Pink, Pink just Kilda. said not not him. It must be lower. Ah, must I yeah. must be lower. <laughs> <laughs> so St Kilda Bulldogs, you know, Crows Essendon if uh, in Adelaide. So that would be a good game if Crows continue the form they had tonight, uh, yesterday. Proves he's the weak link. <laughs> <laughs> Savage, Calzo, but I disagree. Um, Collingwood and Port, you're playing at MCG, though. So... Yes, we are. But we'll, yeah. we're, oh, we're that's right. We're going to we're that game. We're going to be there. So, yeah, if anyone's going to the game, make sure you come say hello. We'll... Absolutely. Take a photo with us or something. Yeah. And you should record your day of getting to the G. Yeah, I reckon. Oh, well, Absolutely. I, I, we'll probably be all recorded together, I think. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got... Brisbane and Geelong in Brisbane. That'll be that should be a good game if Brisbane are playing as good as they are. Yeah. Eagles and Fremantle. We've touched on that one. Should be a good game. Sydney, Gold Coast, and North and Ho- next week's a fracking round of footy. North and who? 
Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Oh, that's, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm excited to see that game actually. In at Marvel, that that's that's a good round of football. We're going to find out a lot about a lot of teams next yep. week. Are we? Our big big shout out to Ava. She's got her first game on Sunday next week too. Yep. Who, who's Ava? Do you want to just let everyone know who Ava is? Ava is the daughter. <laughs> she got her first first game of footy. She got a jumper presentation today. She's number twelve. So good to see. That's fantastic. I'm going to be goal umpire, so that'll be good. It's You'll fun. have to give us a rundown on the show next week. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love it. All right, let's wrap it up, Eggster. Let's wrap it up. Well, I think you're the one that the, the tears, tears off at the end, but uh, before we say goodbye, make sure you check out our Facebook and our Instagram and our TikTok. I'm just getting them up in chat now. And don't forget to check out, <laughs> check out our merch store. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel or like this video, I should say, because yes. um, it does help promote the video and get us uh, out in front of other people. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube, please subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when we go live. We don't really post other videos on YouTube. We just do our live show. Yep. Um, so definitely check us out on socials that Eggy mentioned and, and posted below. Mate, 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 maybe maybe in time we'll, uh, we'll start doing other bits when we go into the footy and that but but we are we are we are very social so we do like to get out and about so don't be scared so if you're going to a game reach out see if we're going or maybe grab a beer and go, go watch a game at a, at a pub or something at a venue absolutely absolutely but uh to everyone that's tuned in thank you once again uh you loyal viewers are, are amazing we enjoy chatting to you guys while we're in stream and off off stream as well so when we're you know messaging and whatnot but we love what we do and we love interacting with you all so Peace out to you all, and let's hope next weekend is an explosive round of footy because it sounds like it's gonna. It's gonna. Gonna.